It's time for another hour of Reflections of Grace Outreach Ministries, Thursday weekly discussion with Thomas and Denise. We are the walkers, inspiring souls and removing the mask through the word of God. Join us as we discuss biblical topics with a life applicable approach. We talk about biblical topics such as marriage, purpose, loneliness, family, salvation, forgiveness, holiness, and so much more. We also have inspirational books and poetry that we expound on during our weekly program. You can subscribe to us on our YouTube channel at Reflections of Grace Outreach Ministries and join our Anchor Podcast channel. And now join us for another enjoyable evening. God bless. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. This is Reflections of Grace Outreach Ministries. My name is Elder Thomas Walker. My wife, Minister Denise, she's away on assignment. But we are so glad and delighted that you have taken the time to join us on today. Today is a great day. It's Thursday. It's summertime. You know, all the flowers are out blossoming and blooming and people are out enjoying themselves. And we also still have the the COVID virus out. So everyone be safe, take precautions, you know, six foot uh, distance, wear your mask if possible, sanitize, everything. And I want to just invite you all in tonight to just sit and enjoy. Tonight, I want to talk about a, a subject that I had been reading uh, while I was on vacation. I was on vacation last week, um, and I had opportunity to sit and and really relax and get some rest. And I really was thankful to my wife for um, that opportunity. She suggested it, and and it was great. I mean, with all of the sicknesses and the illnesses that um, essentially I've been through in the past year. You know, it was good to get away and and just not think about anything or or worry about anything, but just relax mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, and kind of recharge your batteries. You know, everyone needs to do that at some point in time in life because even the Energizer Bunny run out. (laughs) So I know for sure I'm not a bunny and I don't have a battery in my back or two batteries, but um, nonetheless, you know, I thank God that we have another opportunity to come together, you know, and just have a discussion on a couple of things. Tonight's discussion, we're going to be talking about the being made whole, you know. So um, we want you to sit back and, and just think about it. And we're going to be talking tonight from the book of Mark and the Bible, the fifth chapter, the 25th through the 34th verse. And we have a reference, cross-reference scriptures in Hebrew, the 11th chapter in the first verse and Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and the sixth. So before we get started, I want to open with a word of prayer really quickly. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you for all your love and kindness and tender mercies toward us. We ask you, Lord, to continue to strengthen us as we go forth. We ask you to decrease our knowledge and understanding and increase your Holy Spirit in us that we may understand, listen, and discuss the things about being made whole to where we can go forth and share with others. We thank you and we bless your name. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So. Again, tonight is is a really good night that I, I I wanted to talk about being made whole. And as believers in Christ, you know that our faith is a major part of our lives. And with faith, we find peace and when we're facing problems and, and concerns. And with faith, we have the ability to love and, uh, and trust others. And, you know, it's faith that helps us to go to the doctors <laughs> and other places when we need help. So faith allows us to, to believe and trust that something good is going to happen. And if we don't have faith, you know, how can we believe that something is happening that that's going to happen is going to happen for our good? 
you know, in the Bible, there's a woman with the issue of blood. I'm quite sure that some people have already heard this story before in different formats and different uh, variations. But I want to talk about um, how she believed that Jesus could help her. You know, she needed the healing and, and she needed deliverance. And, and, and after all else failed, she turned to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, uh, uh, do we try everything before coming to Jesus or do we just immediately uh, start praying and say, Lord, help me, Lord, help me? You know, let, let's let's talk about that for a minute. You know, is, is there a difference in going to Jesus first? as opposed to trying everything else and needing Jesus, you know? So that's a difference. You know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she had no other choice, you know? And the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about how uh, after all else fell, she heard about Jesus passing by and, and she pushed her way through to at least get a chance to touch the hem of his garment. You know, that's faith. That is some faith that, that, that when you know nothing else works, nothing else matters, man, to have that faith, to have that ability to walk out and really trust that what you're doing in, in, in all essence is going to make a difference. So, Tonight we're gonna we're gonna read the chapter and and it's they very small uh, verses I think it's like four or five verses and I just want you all to kind of uh, under get in a picture of who she is who this woman is and not so much as the illness you know or the the thing that she's enduring but picture yourself as that woman <laughs> that woman okay then. And really, really let it become personal for you and, and see how would you feel and think about these things? Would you do the same that she did or would you not do it? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, as you get your Bibles, it's Mark 5th chapter, uh, 25th through 34th verse. And it says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years had suffered many days and suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather getting worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I can touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt it in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude uh, of people thronging around you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what had happened to her, she came and fell down before him and told him the whole story. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your afflictions. Wow. That, now, that's a story there. Now, this woman it, in the Bible tells us how she went to doctors and she had this illness. She had this problem that she needed corrected. And she went to each doctor and every doctor went to her that, that came, you know, trying to do modern medicine, trying to do things to help her. It did no good. She continued to walk in faith to the doctors because the doctors, she had heard, okay, this doctor is a specialist and you go to this doctor, this doctor is going to help you. And she went to that doctor and, and she was happy and she really believed that that doctor was going to be able to help fix her issue. Now, she had an issue of blood for 12 years. 
that's a long time to be suffering about something like that, to have something coming out of you for 12 long years, day in, day out, 24 hours a day. You can understand, you can imagine the mental struggle and to the physical struggle that she had to deal with on a daily basis. But yet and still, when she heard about a doctor, she ran to that doctor because she she had faith to believe that doctor was going to be able to heal her, you know, and it, it didn't work. The, the, the doctor's medicine and all of those things, they didn't work for her. So she continued. Now, this went on for 12 years, repetitious. You, and you know how sometimes when we find doctors on the Internet or we, we get uh, referrals to doctors and they check us out, they poke us with this, poke us with that, poke us with everything and say, oh, yeah, you have X, Y, Z. So we're going to give you this pill. OK, so that pill don't work. And now you're still in pain. And you still have this issue and you're saying, OK, why am I still going to this doctor and why is this pain not get, getting better? And so I understand that this lady went through the same problem and she spent all her money. See, they didn't have health insurance back then. So she couldn't get Blue Cross Blue Shield or Kaiser or get public aid to go to those those places. She had to work and make money. Why she's going through her issue and then go with her issue to pay the doctor and not get a result. How many times have we done that? How many times have we uh, had, was forced to do things in order to try to get a result and then the result don't come the way you want it? Man, that is disheartening. And that is that that makes you lose hope that make you feel hopeless because nothing is helping up to this point. So she continued on. She continued on for 12 years. But now in the crowd, she heard about Jesus uh, raising up Lazarus. She heard about the withered hand coming back. She heard about, um, you know, the other miracles that Jesus did. So she was like, wait a minute, you know. I know he's doing that, but it might not be true. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to go with what I know. That's the norm. I'm going to continue to go with what's been working or not working that I can see tangibly. See, a lot of times when, when we want to be made whole, you know, we want to look at the facts. We want to see the doctor credentials. We want to see if he's done the surgeries for a long time. He, we want to see what type of medicines he give us. We want to even see the uh, the side effects of the medicine. Now, the side effects is worse than your, your problem and your issue. But if that doctor says, take this, you're going to get better. Oh, you're going to take it. Yeah, you're going to take it. And now that has nothing to do with your faith in God. It has nothing to do with your faith in Christ. It's just the, the method that you are accustomed to. It's the means that you are accustomed to. So a lot of people might not have that faith to say, I'm not going to take this medicine and I'm just going to trust and wait on God. And that's fine for most people. And that's fine for some. But if you know that that doctor has something that can help you in the immediate right then and there. What's wrong with, you know, trying it? I mean, all of our, let's be honest, you know, each of our bodies are, are made organically. Each of our body has come into this world with some DNA or genetic structure or even a genetic defect that makes us susceptible to diseases and illnesses. Now, let's talk about diseases and illnesses. They are all generated and created on this earth. So let's not get that misconstrued, you know, just like out in the, in the Arctic with the air, with the icebergs and everything due to global warming that people say, you know, the viruses and the bacteria that has been frozen and those ice caps and those glaciers for millennia and millennia of years, it's starting to melt. 
And those viruses are becoming alive again. And that bacteria is becoming alive again. Thus, they're reclaiming their, their space in the ecosystem. So when we think in terms of that, you know, all of us together on this earth are organically connected in some way or another, whether negatively or positively. So therefore, when we have doctors that come and says, well, take this medicine, here's the side effect here and there, then, you know, it's quite possibly uh, a remedy that could help you temporarily to maintain uh, your life expectancy, to maintain your, your viability on this earth. Now, with this woman in the Bible, that certain woman, she tried all of that. She did everything that, that was humanly possible to fix her issue, and it didn't work. See, a lot of us, sometimes we get to a place where we want to jump out there and say, I'm just going to trust God. I'm not going to take any medicine because that's my faith. Okay, I get that, and that's great. But let's talk about, have you tested your faith? You know what I'm saying? Have your faith been tested to the place where you had nowhere else to go? You had nothing else to turn to. You had no place else, no other remedy, no other uh, recourse to turn to like this woman. This woman had no place else to go. Next stop for her, had she not seen Jesus, she was resigning herself. Okay, I'm just going to die because I tried all that she could and nothing helped and it got worse for her. That's when she called on Jesus, just when she went to find Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Now, on this earth, God has given us wisdom or there is wisdom on this earth where there are some things and medicines that can cure our illnesses. We don't have to sit and allow our body to break down and get worse and worse and worse to the point of death. And then you want to call on Jesus, but you haven't enacted your faith all of that time to even have a relationship with him that he may, may heal you. You have not walked in the faith and the essence of knowing that God can heal, deliver, and set us free. But when it comes time to close to, to, to your demise, now we want to have prayer. Now we want to open up our hearts to Jesus. Now we want to get on board with the good Lord, you know, Sometimes it, it works, and sometimes God has a plan and purpose for healing. But then there's other times when God, you know, there might be instances where the, the, your prayers aren't answered. <laughs> you know, where were you 10 years ago when, you know, I reached out to you? I sent angels your way to uh, witness to you to evangelize to you? Where were you when I was telling you that I loved you? Where were you when I was providing all the, the things that you needed in your household? Where were you when your son got sick and, and I made sure that he was healed? You know, now you can't answer those questions because when you are far from God, you are far from the Savior, you are far from Jesus. And see, the lady, what she did, she 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 came behind him and the crowd. I mean, she pressed her way through. I mean, it had to have been hundreds of thousands of people trying to, to see Jesus or or in the way of, of her getting to Jesus. But she took her time and her effort and her strength and her faith. She battled through the crowd. She went through something. I mean, she was bleeding and stumbling and falling and, and moving people out of the way. And people were probably cursing at her and telling her, get out of the way, you sick and, and all this stuff. They probably were doing that to her, but she didn't give up though because she wanted to know and she wanted to get close to Jesus. She wanted that effort. She, she pushed that effort because she needed her healing. See, I, I understand 
the woman. I understand the woman more more than anyone could ever imagine, you know, and and I can relate to her because there are so many things that that illness wise that I deal with on a regular daily basis. And I'm the I, I try the doctors. The doctors are doing what they can, the medicines, you know, and everything like that. But you know, I know that I have to keep my relationship strong. I got to keep pressing to find Jesus. So when I need that healing from him and he's in his virtue is getting ready to, to remove, re release itself, I want to be there. I want to be where he could turn around and see me and say, you touch me. <laughs> you see, I'm already explaining to him what my issues are. I'm already explaining to him, Lord, I need help. I need the virtue to be taken from your body and given it to mine to heal me. But right now I'm still pressing. Right now I'm still moving. Right now I'm in the crowd walking and pressing by faith to get to that place where Jesus will say, okay, somebody touched me. You know, so that's what I want to leave with you all today. Get to that place where you want to be made whole. Get to that place where your faith is strengthened. Your faith is, is activated to the place where you, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But you're going to have that faith to know and to believe that God is with you. You know, with this woman, she had nothing else to lose. She had nothing else to stand for. She had nowhere else to go but Jesus. And we have to get to that place to where we have no place else to go but to Jesus ourselves. Um, my illnesses, you know, I battle with uh, post-traumatic stress. I battle with major depression, you know, and I battle with tinnitus. And, and both of those things are, are correlative. They both are connected due to the, the tinnitus. And if you don't know what tinnitus is, tinnitus is ringing in the ears constantly. So there's no rest unless you sleep for to deal with the tinnitus. And it sounds like a beep, beep. And sometimes it gets louder and sometimes it doesn't get as loud, but nonetheless it's there. It's like you can only hear that. And then you have instances, I have instances where you know, there's confusion <laughs> because of the, 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 the amount of noise that's going on. And when, when you have that, then you can't really articulate words. You can't really articulate uh, uh, what's people saying. And I can't really, you know, understand what people are saying in that moment or in that instance. But that's because the tinnitus has, um, it's loud. And so it's like somebody trying to talk over somebody talking <laughs> and you got to say, wait a minute, slow down, be quiet for a minute, let me hear. So see, I understand what the lady is, is going through because she trying everything that she could. She doing everything she could humanly possible. But I know, just like she know, you know, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. See, I, I, I probably haven't touched the hem of his garment yet. And he probably haven't take you know released the virtue yet, but am, does that mean that I'm going to stop pressing? I'm going to stop believing? I'm going to stop trusting in the Lord? No, no, because as long as I have faith, as long as I believe, you know, then there's a chance, there's an understanding that. It is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So I might not see my healing right now. I might not even be able to feel it or touch it right now, but I believe that it's there. And so that's the difference. When you believe that something is there, you got to walk by faith. And like the Bible says, not by sight. So you ain't got to see it to believe it. You just have to believe it and know that it is there. <laughs> yes, Lord. And that is true. Now, the Bible also tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge him 
and he will direct our paths. I know a lot of people, we've heard that before, and that's one of those inspirational quotes that people hang on their walls. But do you really understand what trusting in the Lord with all your heart means? When you're going through an illness and continued sickness, continue, continued illness or continued disease to the place where you have nothing, you, you, you have no answers for what you're going through. All you have is your trust. <laughs> and you have to have that trust with all your heart because the healing might not come. The healing and deliverance and being set free might not come. That doesn't mean God doesn't love you. That just means your healing just not coming yet. That means your faith has to continue be to, to, to grow and continue to elevate itself to the place where when people see you going through your struggle, they can see that you are a man of faith because you're not giving up and that you haven't given in and you haven't given up to the hopelessness. You know, that's what's important for all of us to know and remember while we're going through our situations on this earth. Now, Paul, if we talk, take Paul as an example. Paul was a, a, one of the apostles and he even talked about an infirmity in his body or infirmity that he was going through. Although he never really mentioned what it was and he never really explained what it was. Some of the scholars believe it's, you know, maybe his speech impediment or he was being tempted or some other stuff that maybe he was going through. We don't know because he didn't mention it. He just said infirmity. <laughs> and what the definition of infirmity is, um, you know, it's a physical weakness or ailment. It's a quality or state of being infirm. I mean, a lack of strength. And it's maybe a moral weakness or failing. So we don't know which one it is. And we can't categorize Paul's illness or infirmity because he never told us. But we can tell ourselves what our infirmities are. We can talk to ourselves about what our weaknesses are and our shortcomings and our illnesses are. And those are the infirmities that we need to take to God. Those are the infirmities that we need to understand that when all else fails on this earth, who can we turn to? When the doctors have given up hope, where can we go? We, we, we can't just sit in our hopelessness. We can't just sit in our state of depression. We can't sit in our anxiety. We can't sit in our sickness because that would destroy us. And more importantly, that would defeat the purpose of why we're here on earth. Did you know that each and every one of us have a purpose on this earth, whether we are going through a struggle or we have not reached a struggle or have not endured anything yet? Each of us have a purpose on this earth to connect and to be uh, light and shining in dark places. You know, we have that ability as men and women on this earth, whether you believe in Jesus or whether you don't believe in Jesus, whether you are a Christian or a non-believer, you still have a purpose on this earth. Now, uh, a point that I have to make, I have a cousin who's a, a great record producer. I had an opportunity to listen to some of his um, producing, you know, how he engineering and everything with the look the boards and all of that stuff. And, you know, the, the talent that he has to do that and to make the music sound warm, make it sound exciting, make it sound, you know, like you want to hear it. You know, it has that 90s tone and sound to it. And, and, and it really is nice and full, you know. That's a talent that he has, that God has given him a gift to do that. So many of us have creativity. Many of ha us have things that God has already inputted and imparted into us to do, you know. And if we took the time to understand that our purpose could be and our talent can be elevated to uh, give thanks and honor to God, 
you think about how much more, you know, nice and more, more gracious that would mean to God to know that we are giving him back the gift that he has given us. Now, I understand the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. So some of us have to use our talent to, to eat, to sustain life. But there should be an op uh, opportunity there where our talent and our gift uh, is given to the Lord and honor of and reverence to him giving it to us. See, our genetic makeup does not always give us uh, the ability to do things. You know how people, you know, they be, they're a doctor and then they, can't, they come up and they're really scientific and they want to become doctors and they become doctors as well. Well, it's not, that's not genetic. <laughs> that's him having the ability, the gift from God that gave, that gave him to be able to study and learn on that level. So just because you can't use a doctor and your son becomes a doctor, that don't mean you gave that to him. That means God gave him that wisdom and that academia to be able to, to handle and study those things. So you see the, the see where it goes at. So when you see your son and he picking his nose and and don't know how to tie his shoes up and stuff. How many of y'all say, that's my boy over there. He can't tie his shoes. He's seven years old. He can't tie his shoes. They got that from me. You know, nobody's saying that, right? But that's where, where we're saying that God has a measure of gift for everyone. He has a measure of faith for everyone. This woman chose, after she had exhausted everything, to walk by faith to press by faith, to press in faith, and understanding that if I could just touch. So she was making a statement right there of faith. If I could just touch his garment. Now, she didn't want to touch him. She ain't she stunned about trying to touch Jesus. She didn't want to lock up his hair. She didn't want him to hug her. She didn't want him to lay hands on her. She know that probably wasn't going to happen. So, but she said, if I could just touch the hem, you know what a hem of a garment is? That's a little small portion like this, like the, what's this thing at? It's like this right here, you know, like the, your collar. That's just the hem uh, of his garment. And all she wanted to do is just touch that, you know. And that's how much faith that she said, if I could just touch the hem. You know, that's some awesome faith. That's some awesome belief. Knowing that if if I just get to his clothes, <laughs> if I just have his clothes touch me, I'll be made whole. Wow. Now, now that's faith. Now that's what we're looking for. That's what God is looking for in each and every one of us. We might not can feel God right now. We might not can uh, uh, see his workmanship and everything that we're doing right now in our earth and in, in, in our lives. We might not feel the excitement, not the, the, the feelings of, of peace that surpasses all understanding. And we might not even feel in our best of moods due to everything that's going on in this earthly body. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? In this earthly body, you know, you might not feel like getting out of bed when you're battling depression. You might not feel like going to work every morning when you know your back ache and you have to drive in traffic two and three hours to get to work. You might not feel like going to the store because you're going to be around a bunch of people and they, they get on your nerves real bad. You know, those things that uh, happen to each and every one of us in our daily lives. We might not even want to be around our families and friends and kids and, and grandkids. We might not want to be around no one, you know, because that's who we are in the, on a human level. But when we are transformed and we had a love of Christ in us, then those things become secondary. You, you learn to live with them. You learn to work with them. You learn to deal with them until the hem of God's garment comes along. And that's when you press. That's when you say, oh, if I could just, just get that relief from Jesus, if I can just get that relief somehow, then I'm going to be all right. That's the way we have to look at life. That's where we have to deal with life on a daily basis. You know, and, and there's nothing 
nothing that we should feel sorry for or feel bad about if we're going through struggles, if we're going through situations that are beating us up. I mean, literally beating us up, <laughs> you know, we have to know that God is with us. We have to know that in the struggle that there is hope. There is hope. That woman knew that in that crowd, you know, she said, if I could only touch his clothes, how much, how, how deep does that faith go? How many of us can be or at that point in our lives that we are willing to keep pressing, no matter what the issues are, no matter what the situations that are going on in our lives, uh, that we're willing to press. See, we can't give up when the sickness comes, when the illness comes, when the financial woes and the, and the, the, the social problems come up in our lives to where we're facing evictions or we're going through domestic violence situations or we know of people that are struggling and hurting. We can't give up. There's hope. There's always hope. As long as we open our eyes and we're able to see the sunrise, there is hope. So I encourage each of you, don't give up hope. I don't know who might need to hear this, but don't give up hope because God is there. He's just waiting and looking for and watching your press. You know, like the, the woman with the, the issue, she pressed. She continued to go for 12 long years. She continued to move. She continued to believe, you know, and then when she got to Jesus, she said, oh, I don't had these other people. Them other people, ain't, they didn't do me no good. But this man here, <laughs> if I could just touch his garment, <laughs> I wouldn't even have to talk to him. I, I wouldn't even have to see him. He don't have to see me. I just want to get to that place where I could just touch his garment. Something that he's holding, that he has, that he's walking in. If I could just get to him, then I'll be made whole. Isn't that something? Now, see, Jesus had to turn around and look at her. He said, who touched me? He didn't even know who it was, but she knew who he was. Who he was. And that's where we got to be at in our lives. Whenever we're going through situations and problems, the Lord is there with you. The Lord is there, you know. And the Bible tells us, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So when we get to that place, and we all have gotten to that place at one point or another, and if you haven't gotten to that place, keep living. Keep living. Uh, some things uh, come faster than others, but in those situations and in those times that you don't know where else to turn and you don't know where else to go, you still got to have that faith. You still have to exercise that faith, knowing and believing that no matter what happened, no matter what goes on, no matter what's seen or unseen that's coming against you, that God is still there with you because guess what? It could be worse. You know, it could be a worse situation where, just like with the woman, for example, uh, her worst could have been she could have bled to death. Her worst could have been she could have uh, gotten to the place where she had taken her own life. You know, that's worse. That's when you get to the worst. But for 12 long years, she believed that there was hope. So I'm telling you, if you all are going through something, domestic violence, something that's hurting and healing you, you having problems in your home, problem with your family, or, or you are just going through illnesses all through your body. There's hope. Keep pressing. Don't give up. Keep walking in faith. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, Acknowledge God and he will direct your path. See, God will give you a, a path to go on. God, a, a clear way for you to continue to grow in your faith. And even while you're sick, even while your legs might be uh, uh, hurting or you might not have legs or arms, when you might even be blind, 
even in all those situations that may come up with you physically. Just continue to build your faith, knowing that in all of these things, when I am weak, then I am strong. That's what Paul said. When I am weak, then I am strong. And he also says, but God's grace is sufficient for me. So we have to get to that place where if if no help comes, if the sickness still remains there, you have to still re re resign yourself to know that I'm going to still trust you, God, because I know that you are the answer and you have the ultimate answer. You might not be able to answer me right now, Lord, but I'm going to be like that woman in the Bible. I'm going to continue to press my faith, continue to press my way, no matter what. And if we're praying about situations in our lives, if you listen to me and, and you have this, this issue with home, an issue with mom, an issue with dad, if you have these issues with, with building family relationships, keep praying, keep fasting, keep trusting, keep believing that the Lord will make a way. If you're going to the doctor tomorrow or next week and, and you're not knowing what the report is going to be, don't worry about it. Trust God, have faith and believe that whatever the outcome is, that the Lord is with you. You have to believe that the, his rod and his staff will comfort you. Now, God's rod, rod, rod and his staff is his word and his son and the Holy Spirit. Those are, are the, 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 the people that will comfort you. You know, when you're going through your roughest and toughest times, you can always call out to God and say, God, I can't take this no more. I can't deal with it anymore, Lord. You got to take it from me. You got to help me. Come see about me. You know, and you got to mean it with your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can't just say these words and believe just because you said it, something's going to happen. No, that's not going to that's not going to work. You got to have faith. When you're saying these things, you got to have 100% belief in all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And when you do that, when it's God's timing, he'll make the difference. And if he, if he doesn't heal your body and you still have to go through the struggle, think about the testimony that you're going to be able to tell others that you're going through this battle and you're going through it in peace. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding. You have a, a joy knowing that in your weakness, you still have strength to be able to proclaim Jesus to others. Your life would be a testimony of your, your courage, of your strength, and of your faith. You know, you don't have to call out to the world and let people know, hey, 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 this is what's going on with me. And then, I, I, you know, but. Telling your testimony it makes a difference. You know, the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. That's in the book of Revelations. So we have to know that our tes testimony is important. And everything that we go through and we overcome and, and we persevere through, that's a testimony. Think about it. How many of you all have been through situations where you just didn't know where the end was going to be, but you continue to walk, you continue to believe, you continue to press like the lady. She continued to press and she continued to believe until she got to the hem, a hem of a garment. It's like some threads or something. And that made that virtue who, who left out of Jesus and into her and healed her. And you know what she did after that when she, she saw Jesus and Jesus, both of them saw each other? She fell down and be, with fear and began to worship him and, and, and tell him all about it. See, Jesus wants us to be upfront and honest with him. When we're going through situations and, and, and problems and struggles that we can't handle, that we need his help with, we're not put on this world to be strong like that and and. and you can handle everything. Some of us have uh, 
our breaking points. Some of us have points where we just can't do it anymore. We don't know how to do it anymore. That's when we need to call on Jesus. That's when we need to reach out and say, God, <laughs> there's no other help I know. I don't know. You know, like that song says, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you withdraw your hand from me, where other else, other place would I go? That's what we need to, to concentrate and focus on. So being made whole is first mental. Being made whole is then spiritual. Being made whole is at least the last of all, it would be physical. So if you spiritually and mentally got your mind and your heart focused on, I'm going to still trust Jesus for my physical healing, but my mental and my emotional healing, I'm, I'm by his stripes, I'm healed. And you're going to walk in joy and you're going to walk and believe and you're going to walk in faith like that woman, her physical body, her physical body was still bleeding everywhere. She still had her infirmities and her illnesses, but in her mind and in her spirit, she had the spirit to press forward to see Jesus. She had the spirit and the heart desire to be made whole. So she didn't give up. Her body was about to break down and she was going through it for 12 years. So she knew her body was no count, but in her mind and her spirit, she had the spirit and the mind of a, of, of a five-year-old or a six-year-old or a two-year-old, one of them terrible twos that, that's all over the place into everything. So that's the energy that she had. That's the, that's the, the, the desire that she had was to, to get to Jesus in that moment. And I'm encouraging anybody that's going through any struggle. I'm going through struggle right now. And my body is not all that great. I have... I have uh, I have cognition issues um, and I have nerve damage. I have spinal damage. I have screws in my neck and rods in my neck, you know. And so there's a lot of things that's going on. If I showed you all the list of, of medical conditions that's been documented by a doctor, the real doctor, the VA, Veterans Administration. So, you know, they don't just give you a diagnosis, and especially you're a soldier. They, they diagnose it and triple diagnose it and double, quadruple diagnose it before they put it on paper. So, but I have those things. But does that keep me from getting on this channel every week to proclaim Christ? No, it doesn't. Does that stop my faith and my joy, knowing that when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me? I mean, he has done so much. I, I talk to my wife and I tell my wife a lot of times that God has blessed me so much that I didn't even think I could have the blessings that he has given me. I, I, I didn't even I didn't know it was possible. I'm a poor man, a, a, a guy that grew up poor on the west side of Chicago. We, you know, we didn't have everything. We had government cheese. We had food stamps, s &H green stamps. We had all those things. But, but the Lord saw fit to continue to bless me and my whole family and my sisters and my mother uh, to the point where we know that it was nothing but Jesus, nothing but the, the good Lord that had, has sustained us, has blessed us, and has kept us. So when I see a lot of things out there in the world and I feel all these illnesses and aches and pains that go on through my body, I, can, I still, like the Bible say, count it all joy because it could be worse. It could be worse. But my, my mind and my heart is fixed in believing that in those days, those dark days, in those days that I might not want to get out of bed, or those days when my body is, is aching and hurting and pain, and those days when the ringing is so loud that I can't even concentrate, and my ears ache so much from the ringing and headaches, you know, I can still call on Jesus. I can still find comfort and peace and 
reading his word. I could still find comfort and peace listening to some of the, the, the uh, favorite gospel songs that, that I like to hear and find comfort and peace in that. You know, <laughs> wow, that is, that is great. And I want to encourage you all, no matter what you're going through, like that woman with the issue of blood, continue, press press. God wants you to press. God wants you to continue to get to know him. God wants you to give your life to him so that he can love on you and heal your body and bless you the way that he see fit for, for you to live, not for what, what you want to live like. You might want to be a millionaire. God might want you to be a thousandaire, <laughs> but debt free. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and in and, and peace and happiness. So, yeah, so I just thank God for tonight, the discussion. And I want to encourage you all as before we leave the tonight's discussion, get to know who God is. It's important, especially in today's society. There's so much, so many things that's going on that that you don't even know whether the world is upside down or going right side up. And there's so much evil that's rampant in the world. It's like people are becoming desensitized to what's morally right. And we got lawmakers that's, that's making these decisions for, uh, for the whole country that might not be in the best interest of the whole country, you know? And we have so many other things that's going on and diseases and illnesses that's running rampant. Now, how did monkeypox come back into the world? I mean, that was eradicated some time ago. <laughs> so how did it come back? I, I don't know. I don't know where the monkey came from and I don't know where the pox came from, but some kind of way they made it back into the world. So that's an indication that we have to start putting our faith and our trust and our pressing back into what's tangible, back into God, because he made us and he know all about us and he know what each and every one of us as individuals need. And all it takes is a press. Press means call out to him, have a conversation with God and, and just talk to him with your heart, from your heart and see what, manner, what things will come from him and you having a conversation and building a relationship. That's what he wants. That's what he desires every day. That it is, is, is his will that none would be lost, but for all of us to come to repentance. So today I, I offer you, if you don't know Jesus today, if you want to be saved and you want to know the, uh, who Jesus is, the real Jesus. I'm not talking about the fake Jesus, the Jesus that love everybody and the Jesus that, that can't do, you know, no wrong and, and all that stuff. I'm talking about the real Jesus, the, the just Jesus, the advocate, the intercessor, the ones that, that uh, died on a cross, the, the one that has all power in his hand that's with the dead, with the, the Hades and came back up with the keys to Hades. Now, that, that's a bad person. <laughs> that's a bad person. <laughs> you know, that's the one I want to get to know. I don't want to know the good and friendly Jesus that everybody done pictured and the good and friendly God. I want to know the one that's just, the one that's righteous, the one that stands in the gap for me when I'm doing wrong. And if you want to know that, that Jesus, all you have to do is reach out to him and, 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 and say, God, I, I I accept your son, Jesus, as my savior, and I want to be transformed and renewed. I want to believe that he died for my sins, and I accept that. Those are the simplest things that you could do, but you have to believe it in your heart. You have to believe it deep down, and you watch the transformation. Watch the peace that comes over your life. Right then and there, you're telling Jesus, okay, Jesus, take the wheel. In my life, I want you to take the wheel and whatever happens, it's in your hands, God. And that's what God wants us to become his and all his and only his, not half stepping, but the whole way. So God bless you all. And thank you for this opportunity to share about being made whole. Remember, being made whole has to start spiritually. Then mentally, 
than physically. Well, you get that down packed. Then you know that you have a relationship with God and you're able to praise your way through and press your way out of situations, knowing that God is with you. The physical healing will come. The physical pain and struggle will go away. But until that time, your, your mind and your spirit have to be connected to the one true God, which is through Christ Jesus. Amen. So you all have a blessed night and I love you all and thank you all. And don't forget, subscribe or download any of the, the videos. Uh, we're on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Anchor. If you like podcasts, just type in the name Reflections of Grace Outreach Ministries and they'll pick, they, it'll pick up and you'll be able to subscribe or click on the link or whichever way you want to do it. So we love you and we thank you so much. And uh, you all have a blessed night. And I'm going to say a word of prayer before we close. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you, Lord, that you have been so good to us. We thank you that you have provided us with instructions on how to trust you. An example of how the woman with the issue of blood pressed her way to find you. She didn't need to touch you. All she needed was a him because her faith was just that strong to just touch what you was wearing, touch what you had around you to be healed. And Lord, you healed her. And now, Lord, I ask you to go to each home, each person that's under the sound of my voice. If they're going through a struggle, if they're going through a situation in their lives that they need to press through, Show them and reveal to them who you are, Lord. We ask you, Heavenly Father, give them the faith and the, the, the perseverance to press their way to knowing you, knowing you through your word, the Bible, knowing you through the understanding of who the real Jesus is, who you are, the Father. Father, we thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen each and every one of us under the sound of my voice and help us and keep us and guide us. We bless your name. We ask you if it's your will to heal the bodies. We ask you if it's your will, Heavenly Father, to strengthen the faith. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, give peace and joy where it's needed. We love you and we bless your name. These and all the blessings we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you and we bless your name. And you all have a blessed night. Good night.